All right, before I get into this, I'm just gonna say, no loops were made in the, no loops were made in the making of this video. This is all from scratch. And I'm gonna go ahead and say right now, I'm using some pretty expensive plugins, but there's great alternatives out there from Spitfire. The whole lab suite is completely free and absolutely amazing, super comparable in quality. And for some of the mixer effects I'm use, using, you can do pretty much everything in here with stock FL Studio and uh, the Isotope Vinyl or Unstable. That's really all you're going to need, but this is just what I'm used to using. I just wanted to clarify, you can absolutely emulate a sound of this quality. Or maybe I'm just trash, I don't know. The point is, you can get a vintage sound with you know stock plugins and free stuff. You can make stuff sound good with free stuff, is what I'm saying. Anyway, I don't want any uh, newer producers to be discouraged by that, and uh, let's get right into the video. Oh, I didn't see you there. Hello, I'm Professor Digit Beats. Are your melodies lacking? Failing to get that vintage sauce? I got a solution for you, homie. Let me put these headphones on and let me fix all your problems. At least making beats wise. I don't really know if I can help you with your life problems. Anyway, you know what will help your life problems? Or at least your drums? Da 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 da! Digit Beats Chernobyl Drum Kit. Packed with over 110 quality, versatile, mixed well trap sounds. We have the crispiest of claps. We got the thickest, crunchy 808s you could imagine. Dark 808s. Big fat 808s. More dark 808s. Everything. We got punchy kicks. Super distorted, aggressive kicks. We got punchy kicks here. Soft kicks. Everything you could ever need. And we got nice, clicky, crispy hi hats. Wide variety for any genre. Enough self promotion. Let's hop right into making a Q Beats, Frank Dukes, or Palace type melody. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set the BPM to 130. I like to stick between uh, 110 and 140 for Q Beats type melodies. 130 is where we're gonna be working the day. Next, since I don't have any understanding of music theory whatsoever and I'm really dumb, I'm going to load up a scale helper, that way I just know what notes to maybe consider. And I'm going to be using F minor harmonic today. The minor harmonic scale is definitely the key to getting the Q beat sound, because it's definitely the one they use the most. And then, I'm going to go ahead and load up one of my favorite BSTs, and that's Contact. Of course, Contact is more dependent upon the library you're using as opposed to um, you know, contact itself. Contact is kind of a receptacle for everything else. Regardless, I'm going to be using the Fluffy Audio Renaissance Library today, specifically the Baroque guitar. I don't really understand uh, the history behind it, and I'm sure it's cool, but it just sounds good. I'm going to be taking down the close and the mid, uh, that way it sounds more far away and ambient, and I'm just going to hop right into this. Now, for this melody in particular, I'm going to be using the one third beat uh, snap option that way it sounds really just a completely different bounce than usual and it makes the melody a little more unique and stand out among a lot of others i think and i'm just gonna put down a broken up chord or an arpeggio and i'm gonna see what i can come up with here and just like that it's really simple but super effective and we're just gonna keep building upon that process these bottom notes here, I'm going to change up a little bit. That way there's a sense of direction and uh, it's changing throughout. So I think I want to go up to this C, C sharp. And right there, that sounds great to me. So I'm literally just going to copy and paste this across all eight bars. Of course, it'd be a little repetitive if we didn't change it up. So I'm going to change out this G and G sharp. And then over here, I'm going to do the same thing. Except I want the very last uh, arp here to be a little bit different, a little bit higher sounding. So I'm going to do this. 
And there you go. Take down the velocity a little bit here. I'm gonna make it sound a little more mellow and soft. And then I'm gonna hit Alt R to randomize it and make everything sound a little more human like and natural. Last thing I'm gonna do uh, for this is I'm going to, well, that actually sounds pretty good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a grand piano from Omnisphere. And I'm gonna make sure that I kind of layer up the melody and make sure we're filling out the harmonic space and making everything sound full and good. We want everything to sound good. That's that's the that's the goal here at least. And I'm literally just copying in the piano into the or copying the guitar melody into the piano. I think this sounds a little bit silly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snap all these together so it's a full chord as opposed to a broken chord. And that sounds pretty good to me, although I think it'd be a little fast and repetitive, so I'm gonna play every other chord for the piano. I just want it to be a little bit different, but have the same feel and direction as the guitar melody, if that makes sense. And then just like that, we kind of have the main idea. So, oops, I'm just gonna copy and paste this across the entire uh, spectrum. Spectrum, I don't know, eight bars, whatever. I can't think today, I'm just here to fix your melodies. Melody Doctor. So I'm going to connect them, and just like that, it sounds pretty good to me. Again, we're going to make sure the bottom notes here are being reflected. And that sounds great to me here. So take that up. And notice we're changing it up in the same way. We're going, we're switching around the G and the G sharp, and then at the very end we have this higher chord. I'm going to take down the velocity a little more again, make it sound softer, and then I'm going to hit Alt-S just to strumize it a little, make it sound a tiny bit more natural and human. And just like that, we're layering them up. Let me drop it one octave actually, just to make it sound a little more lush, and I'm loving that. It sounds great. So I'm going to take, bring in the guitar again, take down the volume of the piano, and I think that really complements each other pretty well. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab another flute from, not Omnisphere, I'm gonna use Contact for this, if I can spell, perfect. I'm gonna go to the Ethno World Bank, and I'm gonna load up this elusive woodwind. I have no idea how you pronounce this. Duva Chocolaka, Chocolate, Charlie, Charlie Chocolate Fact, something. Uh, the purpose of this, now here's the thing, every melody you make, you can really make it sound like a lot is happening with very little, as long as each sound has its own purpose. So this guitar is adding a rhythm and filling in the lower end here. This piano is adding a little more high end. We'll kind of make it a little higher sounding. And once we EQ it, it sounds a little bit muddy right now, but we're kind of filling out the space the guitar isn't filling out uh, with the piano here. And then this flute, I want to fill out the high end to make it sound like more is happening. Kind of round off the melody, make it sound full. But again, we're only going to be using three sounds here, and it's going to sound super full. Alright, so I'm just going to go to F, and I'm literally just going to make it a short little note here. A little pluck kind of thing. I'm going to shorten them even more. That sounds great. So, notice that in the original melody, we go from G to G sharp, or other way around. So, it's pretty clear that we want that to be reflected here. Right, so we have G sharp down to G on the original melody of the guitar, and then on the second one, we're going from G to G sharp. So. We're going to copy and paste this. Um, there we go. And we're just going to swap these around. Just so everything complements each other and everything is going the same direction. That way it all fits together. Same idea on the second half, except again, the last one goes up to C. So we're going to bring that up. We'll give it a listen, and I think that should be good. I'm going to hit Alt-R to randomize it. And that sounds great so just like that we have the first half done that's just making uh, bouncy simple melodies that are still pretty catchy with the sense of movement and rhythm and their own bounce to them so the drums can kind of complement it and mesh together uh, the second half is gonna be post-processing that's really half the battle uh, we just did um, now we're gonna go ahead and just uh, add some effects make this stuff sound really old 
So I'm going to go ahead and start with the guitar. I'm going to load up Good Hertz Wow Control. Uh, if I can find it. Uh, there it is. Good Hertz Wow Control. Very nice. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and turn off the noise. I figure that if sample makers or beat makers really want to add noise um, after the fact, they can, but it's kind of hard to take it out, so I just don't put it in mine. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add some analog distortion and saturation, and I'm just going to give it a listen as is. I think that sounds a little bit too wobbly and detuned, so I'm going to bring it down to like 7%. But I think right there that actually sounds pretty good. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab Retro Color RC20. Again, take out the noise, I don't feel like it's necessary. Turn down the wobble again. But again, it has kind of a nice, uh, it kind of keeps your ear listening because everything's a little bit unstable and shaky, and I think it just sounds a lot more interesting with these effects on. Turn up the distortion a little bit, make it sound a little grittier. Uh, a great alternative to this um, is going to be isotope vinyl. And just looking back at these melodies now, uh, if you go to, if you look up Spitfire Labs, you can really get incredible alternatives to all these sounds. Spitfire Labs is going to have uh, great kind of guitar sounds and great pianos as well as a great flute option. Uh, I also recommend Keyzone Classic. I can load that up right now. This is a completely free plugin. If it'll load. There you go. And I recommend the Yamaha Grand Piano preset and it's just it's it's very comparable to even the top paid uh, VSTs like Keyscape. Anyway, uh, back to this mixing process, I think this guitar does sound a little bit dry, so I'm going to go ahead and add some reverb to it. And having the dry all the way down and the wet all the way up lets you really hear what it is that's being reverberated. It gives you more control and lets you know what's happening. I'm just going to add a low cut here, just to make sure I'm reverberating what I want. And just like that, that, that sounds great to me. So I'm going to go ahead and add a delay now, just to add some, some kind of notes that are going to bounce off each other. I'm going to hit ping pong, that way it bounces between the listener's ear and makes everything a lot more interesting. Kind of spreads it wide. And just like that, I'm going to go ahead and add a compressor just to kind of rein in the volume and make sure it's not too all over the place. Although it's pretty consistent, so we're going to keep the attack pretty slow. Super light compression here, just kind of reining in a little bit, getting some control on it. That sounds great. Now we're going to load up the piano and we're going to do a pretty similar um, effects chain, but again, each loop and each instrument within that loop is going to have slightly different effects, and you're really just going to do it off your feel. So again, on these uh, kind of tonal instruments that are holding the same note for a while, like a piano, you really want to be careful with the amount of wobble you use, otherwise it really just sounds off. So, I think that sounds good. I'm going to use RC20 here. Turn off the noise once again. I think that's a little too wobbly. I think that sounds about right. And then, again, sounds a little dry to me, so we're just gonna add some reverb. I really actually enjoy the Fruity Reverb too. I've used the trials of all the Valhalla plugins, and honestly, I think Fruity Reverb is just fine. It's all you need. Um, I haven't really looked into many other third-party options, however. Uh, regardless, we're gonna go ahead and put the... That sounds good, actually, yeah. Uh, so that's kind of the main feel we're going for, and we can do the same thing to the flute. We actually probably should go ahead and EQ the guitar just so everything's ready to fill it, uh, fit together. So like I said earlier, we want the guitar to be filling at the lower end, and then the piano is going to go ahead and fill out the higher, uh, the mid-high, and the flute will fill out the high. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my go-to EQ, uh, if I can find it, there we are. And I'm just going to round off this low end so nothing's too muddy or clashing. I'm going to go up to like 120 hertz, something like that, 130. And now I'm literally just going to scoop out this high end a little bit. Right there, that sounds pretty good to me. And then go to the piano. And we want the piano to be sitting where we made a pocket in the guitar. So I really want it to be sitting right in here, so we don't need this area. bit. And I think those complement each other super well. Last thing, we're going to get the flute. So same idea, we're going to go grab Good Hertz Wow Control 3.
Perfect. Sounds good to me. And I'm actually going to push this one pretty hard and put a lot of distortion on it just so it sounds pretty raw and sharp almost. So it's pushing through the rest of the instrumentation, really giving a sense of contrast. Now, contact automatically puts a little bit of reverb on it, so we're going to be careful with the reverb. But again, it's a taste thing. We're just going to do it until it sounds good. Now a lot of this stuff is just comes down to experimentation. You know, I have a ton of plugins in here. I've used all of them. You know, sometimes for certain loops I might use this plugin. Sometimes I might use the other. Uh, there's tons of free alternatives. Like I said, Isotope Vinyl, Unstable are great. The RC20 free trial can be awesome too. Guitar Rig can be crazy on even pianos. I've used it. Um, regardless, let's finish off this melody here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a EQ. Uh, I really don't, you can listen, I really don't want this, these mid frequencies clashing with the guitar, but I do want these higher ones, so I'm just going to kind of duck them out a little bit. Uh, that sounds good to me. Put a compressor on it, we're just going to rein it in a little bit more. And then, I'm going to level it all off. That sounds awesome. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the master. Uh, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to go th uh, throw one more wow control on it. That way everything is running through the same set of effects and it kind of glues it together and makes everything mesh together well because it's running through the same effects chain at the very end. Turn off the noise of course. Make the wobble pretty subtle here. Distort it a little more. Fill it out with some saturation. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab a tape machine. So one of the things that bothers me a lot about these vintage-esque plugins, of course you can never truly emulate vintage or analog hardware with digital stuff, but you know, you can try. That's what we're doing here. If you have these reels on, it's really just making you think it's doing something it's not. You know, the placebo effect can be a pretty powerful thing, so I just like to keep that off and really just use my ears. I can already hear right now it's a lot, it's adding a little bit more high end, but I'm just going to go ahead and drive it a little more. So you can hear right here it's clipping, it's adding some crunch. That's not really what I'm going for in this case, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep it right there, I think. That sounds great to me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and arm the master for recording. I'm going to split the channels of this pattern and I'm going to arrange it a little bit for the loop. And then what we can do is we can go through and we can change the pitch, uh, and or not, we'll see, we'll just experiment with the pitch, and then we're pretty much done, I think. So, let's try this, and I think that that's a fine arrangement. We're going to record this in, and you can see that we're dropping the elements in and out, but we're kind of playing everything right at the very beginning, so if a beat maker is to hear the loop, they get a feel for it right away, and they don't have to wait for it to build up, and they don't get bored. Because even when, when you know when you're in the studio with an artist, you don't want to have to wait 15 seconds listening to a loop develop. We're just gonna play everything right away and then fade it off, and it can be arranged later and chopped up. Fairly uh, simple process here. That sounded really nice, just the way it progresses and everything kind of meshes together. And you can really notice that uh, it, it has a nice analog sound. But again, the effects chain is going to be different for every melody, and we're going to do it based off of feel. Once this is done rendering, it's kind of awkward sitting here waiting. I don't really know what to say, so I'm just going to stare at the camera. Uh, it's almost done rendering, and then we're going to go ahead and change the pitch, see if it can give us the stank face. I mean, the goal of every beat and every melody we make is to get the stank face. If we're not getting a stank face, it's, it's, it's a lost cause. I want to go ahead and turn off the master effects since this was rendered with the master effects already on. I'm just going to give it a listen and put an EQ on it and shape it one more time. And then I'll go ahead and change the pitch and see what I can get out of that. Alright. I want to take it down two semitones because it's just kind of my go-to. Yeah, I'm liking how that's sounding a lot if you can't tell. I'm going to go ahead and round off the low end out a little more high and this thing is done. I 
that, that's perfect. Anyway, yeah, that's how you make a Q Beats Frank Duke type uh, palace sample. Um, let me know if you want any more of these. Give me some suggestions. This is my first time recording tutorial, so I don't quite know what I'm doing yet. But I'm really just trying to give some producers out there my knowledge. I've been at this for a little over a year now, and I'm just kind of looking to share what I've learned and hopefully help somebody out. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Uh, next week, I'm going to go ahead and do a giveaway of my Chernobyl Volume 1 drum kit. Uh, this is all my, it's my personal kit. It's really all I use to make my beats, and I'll, I'll play a beat here at the end with this sample uh, and some drums that I got from the kit. And uh, yeah, I'll just showcase the kit for you guys. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe, uh, like, or dislike, depending on how you feel about the video. And uh, you might have a chance at winning the kit. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later.